So in a recent um, survey by PwC, uh, a majority of CEOs that were asked said that um, climate change um, risks to supply chains, to their supply chains, was one of the major um, risks, one of the major concerns that they had with respect to their business. And if we think about the way that uh, supply chains are uh, organized today, um, uh, increasingly globalized and increasingly integrated, and the fact that a lot of these components, these, uh, these firms that are parts of these uh, globalized supply chains are located in parts of the world that are especially affected by um, climate change, this is not a very surprising, uh, this is not a very surprising finding. Um, today, a lot of supply chains operate with very small inventories and are very tightly integrated so that any disruption to these kind of uh, supply chain organizations can have major implications on other firms that are um, relying on their supply chain partners. Um, and on top of that, um, recent research, recent publications argue that the uh, effects of climate change are only going to increase the types of disruptions and the types of extreme weather events that are going to occur in the future and that are going to uh, affect these uh, organizations in these international supply chains. So what we do in this, so in, in the past, uh, finance and, and economics research has primarily looked at um, the effect of these climate uh, change events, of these extreme weather events on firms themselves and how they sort of perform financially and economically. And with this paper, we go one step or two steps beyond that. We first of all um, ask the research questions if firms um, face financial uh, implications, face financial uh, incentives to make adjustments to their supply chains because of climate change. Um, and secondly, if firms actually do make these kind of adjustments to their supply chains because of their exposure to uh, climate change risks and climate change shocks. Um, let me give you a quick preview of the, uh, the main findings. What we do find is that if we first look just at the direct effects of major climate-related um, events, extreme weather events, in this case floods and heat waves, on the firms themselves, on supplier firms themselves, we find that they reduce um, operating performance, in this case revenue, uh, as well as income over assets, uh, significantly by 5% uh, and 2% respectively. But more interestingly, these shocks to these supplier firms don't only affect these firms themselves, but propagate along the supply chain and also affect customers that are connected to these, uh, to these actually directly affected suppliers in an indirect way. So we find sort of an effect of 2.5% and 1% respectively on customers that are affected by these climate change shocks through their suppliers. This is in line with um, the Barreau and Savagna paper who looked at a sort of a similar um, uh, question in the US context. What we do is extend that by A, looking at this in an international context, and by B, looking at types of shocks that are directly linked to climate change. So things like floods and heat waves that are expected to increase both in sort of their intensity as well as their frequency in the future. And then we move on to the, the second question, do firms adjust their supply chains as a response to this climate change risk? What we do find is that um, customers are indeed more likely to terminate existing supply chains with suppliers for which the um, realized climate shocks uh, exceed the ones that were sort of to be expected when first entering these uh, supply chain relationships. And on top of that, we find that they replace them with other suppliers that have a lower climate change risk, that have a lower occurrence of uh, heat waves and floods during the periods when the, when the firms are uh, operating with these original suppliers. Um, in terms of the data, there are three sort of main components, three main inputs for this paper. Um, first of all, we um, obtain information on existing firm level uh, supply chain relationships between suppliers and customers in um, over 50 countries around the world from Facts at Revere. Um, this data is collected by analysts at Facts at Revere who go through corporate disclosure items like 10Ks, 10Qs, and so on, uh, in which existing supply chain relationships with customers um, are disclosed. Um, to give you a quick idea of what that looks like, this is sort of a global distribution of the supplier firms in our sample. As you can see, sort of there is uh, a little bit of a focus on, on North American and European firms simply because disclosure there is better, it make, makes it easier for the facts that revere people to pick up the existing relationships, but it's, it's truly a global sample in the fact that, in the, in the sense that, um, that the Asian countries are well represented, Australia is well represented, and, and most parts around the world. 
Um, secondly, we, we collect uh, information on climate change-related shocks, climate change-related extreme events, um, related specifically to heat waves and to floods from two um, uh, databases that are uh, publicly available and, and typically used. Um, both allow us to look at this at a very fine granularity. Both of these data sets are um, relatively fine in the, in the sense of how, um, how um, uh, precise the tracking of these heat waves and these floods is, which allows us to, um, at a high granularity, track which suppliers are affected by these shocks at what point in time. We specifically focused on heat waves and on floods because those are two types of extreme weather events that can be very closely linked to, uh, to climate change. And then third, um, uh, so this is an illustration, sorry, uh, this is an illustration of what the flooding data, for example, looks like. Um, as you can see, this is a specific uh, flood event in Bangladesh uh, in 2017, and the, uh, the colored regions, the red colored regions here, that, those would be the flooded areas, which allows us to sort of track in a, in a detailed way which, uh, which firms would be affected by these uh, flood events. And then third, to track um, the, uh, the financial performance aspect, we look at CompuStat um, as well as Facts are Revere to track when these supply chain relationships started and ended. Um, for the second part of the analysis. All right, so for the first part of the analysis, uh, where we ask the question if customers have financial incentives to uh, alter or adjust their supply chains because of climate risk that they're exposed to due to their suppliers, you can imagine two different scenarios. You could think about the fact that customers might be already very diversified in terms of where their supplies come from. They might be sort of uh, making their suppliers absorb the costs of uh, these types of weather events. And in this case, we wouldn't really expect to find an effect of, uh, of climate shock events at the supplier firms on their customers. On the other hand, if uh, it is not possible to, to disassociate this uh, in, in such a way, then these shocks affecting the suppliers would possibly pass on to the, to the customers. <laughs> Um, we uh, evaluate this with a relatively simple setup, putting financial performance, operating performance of the customer firms on the left-hand side, putting um, indicators of climate shocks of the supplier firms on the right-hand side, and then we throw a host of different fixed effects uh, at this to sort of isolate uh, changes of this um, through the time series, um, uh, holding everything else constant as, as well as we can. Um, what we find is that indeed the occurrence uh, in this case um, this would be flood events. Um, our flood events at the supplier firms has a significant both economic and statistical effect on the financial performance, in this case um, revenues and operating income, of the customer firms in the uh, three quarters after the event occurred. We find that this effect is roughly um, uh, two and a half percent relative to the to this uh, sample mean. Uh, if we look to the heat waves, this effect is a little bit smaller, a little bit diminished, um, we also find uh, the same effect if we sort of collapse the sample and do this at the firm level instead of at the relationship level. And we do placebo tests where we look at the same relationships in years where they weren't actually related to each other and we don't find uh, a similar effect. So um, this, this basically goes to answer this first research question, do these customers indeed have an incentive to make adjustments to these uh, relationships? And then we move on to the second uh, research question, do these customer firms um, adjust their supply chains um, when they're exposed to these kind of climate risks, to this kind of climate uh, uh, exposure through their suppliers? And our, um, our, our uh, model or our intuition for, for these tests is basically as follows. So, of course, a customer firm, when they enter a relationship with the supplier firm, knows where the supplier's facilities are located and can therefore already sort of form an expectation of a possible climate risks in the future, right? So we would expect the, uh, the, the customers have an idea, know the probability that these types of um, climate events, that these kinds of extreme events would occur at their suppliers. And so when they enter these supply chain relationships, they would trade off uh, the potential risks of being related to the supplier firm with the benefits, for example, lower input costs and or whatever other benefits the relationship with this particular supplier offers. So, um, the idea here is that typical climate shocks that are sort of in line with what you could have expected at the beginning of the supply chain relationships wouldn't necessarily lead to the end of the relationship because if you're a smart manager at the customer firm, you already knew this was a potential uh, risk and you already traded that off when entering the relationship anyway. But if climate change alters 
these probabilities. If climate change changes the likelihood that these kind of uh, extreme weather events occur at the supplier firm, then suddenly these supply chain relationships that were formed at some point might not be optimal anymore. And this is exactly what we test. By, uh, by putting a dummy variable capturing the end of a relationship in a given year um, on the left-hand side, and then constructing an indicator variable that captures if the realized climate shocks through the, um, through the duration of the supply chain relationships exceeded what you could have expected at the beginning of that relationship. So how do we, um, how do we construct that? Well, we basically look at the five years before the supply chain relationship was uh, started, before the two firms um, started working with each other, and estimate sort of the uh, annual uh, average occurrence of climate shocks during that time window. So heat waves and floods during the time window right before the supply chain relationship started. And then we look at the occurrence of uh, climate shocks, heat waves, and floods uh, in the years during the supply chain relationship in any given year and compare those two um, numbers, and if, um, if the number after the supply chain relationship started is bigger than what you could have expected before, then this indicator will take the value of one, otherwise it's going to be uh, zero. Um, this is related to a um, similar sort of approach uh, in a recent paper. Uh, again, we throw a number of uh, fixed effects at this to rule out that this is driven by any sort of relationship-specific uh, characteristics that are constant over time, that this is driven by any sort of time trends, industry-specific time trends, country trends, or country interaction trends, and really just low, uh, uh, related to, the, to, this, to this variable of interest that um, I was just talking about. Um, what do we find? Well, looking at the occurrence of heat waves, um, we find that indeed um, the, occur the, 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 uh, the, the fact that the realized um, climate uh, shocks in terms of heat waves exceeded the expected climate shocks in terms of heat waves. It has a positive and strongly significant um, effect uh, on the likelihood that in that year or after that year the relationship between the supplier and the customer ends in our sample. Um, this holds for a number of different specifications with a number of different fixed effects in the sort of tightest types of specification in the last column. This is um, equivalent to a uh, increase of 7% relative to the sample mean that a supply chain relationship ends uh, in any given year when, when the realized um, uh, heat waves is higher than the expected number of heat waves. Um, we do the same exercise for floods. We find the same uh, result here. The economic magnitude here is actually stronger. So this is about a 25% increase relative to the sample uh, mean likelihood of a relationship ending in any given year. Um, what I want to stress is that this is not related to, to sort of a mechanical effect where the supplier is just wiped out. If we replace that dummy that captures expected over realized just with only realized climate shocks, which would sort of be just the damage from the, from the, from the event itself, we don't find similar results. It's a mag order of magnitude smaller. We do a number of robustness checks using different windows, using different uh, measures, and find similar results. And then last, I want to talk about who, how do they react after sort of replacing these suppliers or, or, or dropping these suppliers? Um, do they react by replacing them with other suppliers that are fundamentally different? So for each supplier that is, uh, that is dropped, we try to find a replacement supplier that has exactly the same industry code that is, starts a relationship with the same customer in the following two years and compare those uh, new suppliers that just enter relationships with those same customers to the ones that were dropped. Um, over uh, the period during which the supply chain relationship was originally active, during the period after, and during the entire period. Um, and what we find is that uh, the uh, suppliers that are sort of considered in our sample replacement suppliers for the ones that were dropped have both a lower um, occurrence of heat waves during the original period of the supply chain relationship with the first supplier, as well as a lower um, uh, likelihood of occurrence of these heat waves after. And we find the same result looking at flood incidents. So the uh, customers seem to be replacing uh, suppliers with uh, with firms in the same industry that do the same business, that can sort of pick up the same input and, and, uh, and produce them for the customer firms with, uh, with those types of suppliers that are less likely, uh, in hindsight, to have those uh, types of uh, heat and flood-related climate risks. Um, to summarize, um, we have sort of three main messages in this paper. 
Uh, first of all, uh, climate change or climate shock uh, events such as heat waves and floods that affect uh, suppliers uh, also affect, affect customers through existing supply chain relationships. Um, as a result of this financial uh, exposure that customers have to the climate risk of suppliers around the world, they seem to be adjusting these supply chain relationships by dropping those types of suppliers where the, where the actually happening sort of climate uh, exposure is bigger than what they anticipated in the first place. And then they seem to be replacing these firms with other suppliers that have lower uh, climate change related risks. Um, and uh, currently, we're working on extending this, looking at cross-sectional um, heterogeneity, looking at different sort of climate change awareness at the customer firm and, and other uh, firm level uh, characteristics. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to any and all uh, questions.